Let's start with part two, the hands of 2019. First hand I want to show you is this one over here. She's from Hatching Round 1, so the oldest for the Red Model project. In terms of color, I believe genetically she is Wheaton or some sort of Wheaton base, but she has almost no black in her. She came from the Australian Red Ancona Bantam Rooster, so she should be carrying models. Sadly she doesn't have models, because otherwise she would be even more useful. But I might keep her. She's very small. Her comb doesn't look too bad either. Of course she still needs to do a lot of growing, especially in her head. Or on her head. I really like the leg color. It's nice bright and yellow. So she might be a keeper. Next to her we have her younger sister. She's practically the same in color. In base color. A little bit more reddish. And she has mottles with also almost no black. This hen is also very close to the end goal. If her tail was red and if her other feathers were a little bit more reddish, I would have been there. So definitely useful next year. Now we just need to figure out which rooster we are going to put against her. Comb needs to do a lot of growing. So we might discuss that in a future video. But both parents had good combs, so I'm guessing and hoping she will have a good comb too. Next to her we have a, a darker sister. She's also on a Wheaton base ground color. The models are a little bit less, but she is modeled. So that's a good thing and it might change even more when she gets older. Hopefully she will get more models. She has a little bit more black in her, a bit apart from that. She's very useful. She's also very small with a good leg color. Of course at this stage we can't really say a lot about the comb and the wattles in the hands. What a lovely hen. The next to her... We have a Wheaton modeled hen. Also definitely useful. Because she can produce red mottled. In combination with the right rooster. I already have two Wheaton modeled hens. One extra is okay. And she's also the, the smallest of the bunch. As you can see, and she's the same age as her two sisters on the left. She's very small. She's only a little bit bigger than my hand. I'm guessing they will still grow a little bit. The models aren't the greatest, now that, that I take a closer look at her. But of course this is only, I would say, the third or the fourth generation. So we still have a long way to go. But she might be useful. The next to her, we have a very special one. I thought she was from the Australian Red Ancona Bantam Rooster too. But as you can see, she has a rose comb. That made me question. I mean, none of the parents had a rose comb. I did have had the Wyandotte and Sussex Cross in the same breeding flock, but she was already gone when I started collecting eggs for this hatching round. 
Also the color is very different. It's more like some sort of yellow. Not really red, not really wheaten. But she's also mottled. She does look a little bit bigger. I believe it's mostly because she has more down in her feathers. But also not a lot of black. A little bit in her saddle. And some in her neck. But I like this hand. She's very small. So if she came from the Yokohama Bantam line, then she is the smallest of them all. So I might keep her a little bit longer and see what she will grow up to be. But character wise, I would definitely say she's from the Yokohama Bantam line. She's a lot less afraid of me than the other ones. Also, very nice bright yellow legs. Now let's check out the hands from the Yokohama Bantam line. So this is the F2 from the Yokohama Bantam line. This hand over here is what I would say wheat and mottled. She's also quite big and she has a lot of black. So I don't really need to look any further because I'm not going to use her. She's one of the few that has a single comb. So I'm a little bit bummed that the better ones don't have a single comb, or at least the most of them. The hand next to her is a little bit more reddish, but I believe she had a, or she has, partridge base, so that's why she still has a lot of black in her feathers. But the red kind of, yeah, how would you say it, overgrows or overlaps the black. But you can see that there is still a lot of black visible, so I don't think I will use her. Her mottling isn't the greatest too, it might even go away when she goes to another shed. I do like her leg color. And she has a rose comb. Not that that's much of a problem, but... The next to her, we have a very dark hen. She almost looks like some sort of Bordeaux. Not really... So yeah, very red, but as you can see, her neck is pitch black. So is her tail. And she'll show some black in her other feathers. So I don't think I will use her for the red mottle project. I do like the color of this hen. But she also doesn't have a lot of mottles. Only in her neck. Next to her we have her sister. I believe she's also on a partridge, or in England, in England they say a duck wing, I believe, or in America, base. She does have a lot of models, but she also has black next to her model, just like in a Jubilee or a Millefleur. She's also not that red in base color. But I might keep her, but I'm not quite convinced about this hen. For me she has too much black. So it will depend on how the other hens will turn out to be. This hen is very similar. She does have a little bit more white. And the distribution of the white isn't as equal as her sister. That's also not a good thing. 
because in an Ancona Bantam you want perfect models because that's like the trademark of an Ancona Bantam. She is a little bit more reddish than her sister on the left. I like her but I still I'm still having second thoughts on whether I should keep her and if I can use her in, in the in my project. Next up is one of my favorite hens. She definitely has a Wheaton base. She's also modeled quite nice. She doesn't have a lot of black, only next to her model, a little bit in her wings and in her tail. Apart from that, her color is quite even. And since she has a wheaten base, it's much easier to get a nice red color without a lot of black in it. So I'm definitely going to use this hen in a future project. She also has long legs, which is something the Yokohamas were missing. So I'm really liking this hen. Sadly I only have one like this. But I have some very interesting ones over here. This is her sister, the same age, or a little bit younger, no, I believe the same age, from hatching around three. Never had this kind of color in my project before. But now that I take a closer look at it, It actually just looks like Wheaton, but with blue, so blue Wheaton. I believe she is modeled, but it's not that obvious. She has some models in her neck, some in her back. But as you can see, she is still very young, so maybe when she gets older she will have more models. But I'm definitely going to keep her just because I like the color and maybe she might be useful for our project she also has a single comb which is a nice bonus and next to her is one of my favorite hands I don't know how you would call this color it looks like some blue buff Colombian white mottled She also has a single comb, nice yellow legs. And a nice mottling too. So she might be even interesting to use in the Red Model project. We'll see, but I'm definitely going to keep this one. Just because I like the color. Then next to her, we're going to start discussing the hands that are red. 
and white mottled but it's not red mottled as I want it to be especially this hen she has an almost completely white tail and the white even goes far into her saddle even in her back her shoulders are a little bit better now we're getting closer to what I'm aiming for her neck is also very white the red isn't also that red it's more goldish she's very small so that's a good thing as a bonus she also has a single comb but I don't like that her wings are sticking out that much and are way longer than her belly so I'm probably not going to keep this hand next to her we have a sister with a similar color here the red is a little bit more darker of course she's molting right now so I don't know the color of her tail but it's probably completely white but she does has a lot of red and it even goes into her tail so that's a very good thing but not a lot of models so the modeling can be, could be a little bit better she does have a single comb a nice extra the length of her legs is also going more into the direction of an Ancona than a Yokohama and her neck is also a little bit darker and that's a good thing too there's still a lot of work to be done here The last three hands I'm going to show you are probably the most interesting ones. They don't differ that much from their mothers. They do appear to be a little bit more reddish, maybe except for this hand. She's also more of a yeah, something between gold and red in color. She does appear to be mottled. What I don't like is her completely white tail. She also still has some blue in her neck. And a lot of white. She has a rose comb, but that's not an issue. I do like her leg color, it's very yellow. Next to her we have one of my favorites. She already has a, a nice dark red color, especially because it's combined with white. Because the red will always look a little bit more darker when you combine it with black instead of with white or blue. Because I believe she is blue, as you can see in her neck. But she also has some gold or red in her neck. That's a good thing. She's also rose combed. She 
she appears to be the first one. It has some red in her tail. But it's not that obvious. And it's also not a completely white tail. Uh, I mean red tail. And she also has some sort of lacing in her shoulders. Or are just bad models, I don't know. But the overall look of her is not bad. I'm really getting into the direction of a red mottled. She's better than her mother, so... So that means we're getting there. And the last hen is definitely not the least hen. She has a very good contrast between the white and the red. So the red looks even more redder, and more darker. What I don't like about her is her practically completely blue neck and her white tail, which she appears to be mottled. Her leg color is a little bit pale, especially when you compare it to the first hen. It's a lot paler, actually. That's too bad. But that's like a minor problem, especially in this stage of the breeding project. She also has some models in her chest. So I'm really liking this hand. I will definitely use her next year. When we are working towards the perfect red mottled Ancona Bantam. Now we're starting off with the black and blue mottled Ancona Bantams. This hen over here is one from the Livorno Bantam crosses. So she is an F2. But with the rooster that I intentionally wasn't planning on combining with the Livorno Bantams. And she is actually the reason why because the mottling on her is very poor. It's even very hard for me with the camera to pick it up. Apart from that it's not a it's not a bad head. The leg color is a little bit pale but it's not very bad. The comb will probably be quite good, since both parents have good combs. But it's not guaranteed. But I don't like the mottling. So I'm probably not going to keep this one. Next to her we have a single comb black mottled Ancona Bantam hand from my rose comb rooster. I like her black, but I don't like the fact that she doesn't have a lot of models. So what's very interesting in the rose in the line from the rose comb rooster is that the leg color is very good. And they also have black markings. That's something my lines miss. So 
So I might keep her only for the black markings on her legs. But on the other hand, I have this rose comb pen over here. Her color is way better. As you can see the modeling. It's way better. They're quite young, so I believe they are from the third hatching round. But just look at the color on the legs. I never had some of my own breed animals with this much markings on their legs. So that's very interesting. Her models are also a little bit more sharply defined than her single comb sister. So that's a good thing. So I'm definitely going to keep this one. I believe she's also my only black model to rose comb hen. Or I might have one in my other house too. We'll check that out later. And then over here we have one of the two blue mottled hands with rose comb. She's not the prettiest one. She also doesn't appear to have any clear obvious black markings in her legs. But I'm guessing the blue will also dilute the black. So it would be more blue markings. But I'm not sure of that. The color isn't the greatest too. She has like a light blue and a darker blue mixed. When you combine that with models, it appears that you have like three colors. So not the greatest hand. She's also very small, which might lead me to think that she had some sort of bad start in her life. But I'm definitely going to keep her, since I only have two of them. And who knows, maybe she grows out to be something better than she looks now. She's also very young, so she might change a little bit.